Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast, the place to be for all things both looking and feeling our best. In today's episode, we have a very special guest joining us today, and we're going to be focusing on facial lymphatic drainage. We're going to be focusing on balancing our lives as women and having a family and doing, you know, the work thing and the fun thing. And we're also going to be getting into ways that we can actually design our homes with Chris here today because she does something really fun called the wellness den. And so we're going to be getting into a little bit of sort of like feng shui to make sure that the place where we're living is the energies flowing and also with our faces to make sure that the lymphatics are flowing as well too. So this is a really fun episode. And just an FYI, Chris is actually one of the practitioners that I've helped to support behind the scenes uh, with a colleague of mine, Christy, with Building Your Beauty Brand. And so it's great to have Chris here and share with you all some of the great things that she's doing to support women in very specific and beautiful and very helpful ways. So let me tell you a little bit about Chris Ellis. She is a board certified Eastern medicine practitioner and her life's passion is to empower women in midlife to reclaim their vitality and live their best lives. As a board certified Eastern medicine practitioner and a dynamic wellness and lifestyle strategist, she brings over 25 years of experience to her practice, helping women navigate the unique challenges and changes that come with midlife. Her journey into wellness began with a profound curiosity about the human body and mind, leading her to earn a bachelor's degree in health and a master's in Eastern medicine. This academic foundation, combined with extensive hands-on experience, allows her to offer a deeply nuanced understanding of women's health. Her expertise spans a variety of disciplines, including acupuncture, herbal medicine, holistic nutrition, massage therapy, and aesthetics. She integrates energy medicine with natural lifestyle enhancements, creating personalized solutions for women in midlife. She believes in a holistic approach where every aspect of your wellness is nurtured and balanced. Also, as a certified meditation therapist and yoga instructor, she knows the vital connection between the mind and the body. Mindfulness is, a heart, is at the heart of her holistic healing practices, helping you find peace and balance amidst life's transitions. She also specializes in innovative modalities such as frequency-specific technology, providing targeted support for the specific changes you may be experiencing. In her role as a functional lab work expert and microscopist, she delves into the details of your health, offering in-depth assessments that allow for highly personalized health plans. This ensures that every facet of your well-being is considered, from physical vitality to mental and emotional health. At Chris Ellis Modern Wellness, her commitment to excellence, integrity, and transformative results is unwavering. Her mission is to inspire and empower you to take control of your health through education. Welcome, 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 Chris Ellis to the show. I'd love to kick things off with the unlimited dollar question here. What is radiance to you? Hi, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. So what radiance is to me? I feel like the most important thing that I try to do in my own life is to achieve everyday wellness. And so I think by having that mindset of achieving everyday wellness, little small things done the right way, in all of the quadrants of my life really help me to be truly radiant from within. And that's where I feel like true radiance, it, it, it comes from within rather than from the outside. So just making sure that I'm leading a balanced life in all of the quadrants of my life is in my opinion, what, what true radiance is. Absolutely. And 
really the first time that Chris and I met, I saw something really beautiful in you, Chris. You you have this service-based mentality. And I find that when women operate from this position or this framework to be of service and also helping others with their health and with their beauty, it's such a feminine way to operate and make money and all of those things, which is which is really great. So thanks for sharing your perspective on radiance and the different quadrants. For those of you who might be new here to the show, I love to talk about the Ayurvedic description of radiance being the radiant body, which is the 10th body. And it's the electromagnetic projection of all of your different systems with your body, mind, spirit, and energy being the first four bodies of us. And this projection of yourself into the world and leading from the heart, true deep beauty in my observation of working with clients since 2011 really comes from the heart. It comes from the mind. And if we're getting a little bit more sophisticated with what's going on in our body. So Chris, you do a lot of work with looking at people's labs and looking at their biomarkers. This is really key because I know that you work with people as well with their skin and different rejuvenation modalities. But if the insides aren't right, if elevation, if there's an elevation of oxidative stress and inflammation, or if the mind and emotions are off because of hormones and maybe nervous system dysregulation, life stuff that just happens, we see it on our faces. So what would you say are some of the common things that you see a lot of women really struggling with? And then in contrast to that, what are some people doing that you see that are really thriving? So I would say for the, the, the busy woman who has children and a job and, you know, is wearing a lot of hats, I would say that one of the things that I find that they are really challenged with is prepping, preparing themselves for their day. So they set themselves up for success. And I find that when, when they do take those steps, they have, they can achieve this radiance, but trying to do it and not being prepared for your next day with your meals, with your workout bag, you know, packed in the car, so all, you know, your water bottle ready to go the night before. I think all there's all of these little ways that we can help to prepare ourselves so that we can be radiant. We can juggle everything that, that comes at the woman. We, you know, women, we, we, we carry a lot of bags, I would say. And so I find that the more we can be prepared, we set ourselves up for success and we take control of our health through being prepared. Oh, I love that. Yes. One of the sort of tenets to cultivating radiance that I love to teach in my membership is being always ready to be always resilient to be always radiant. Yeah, I really find that that works really well. So it's kind of just affirming to what you said of you know people that are looking better, they're aging better, they're a pleasure to be around because you and I both see a lot of patients. Um, these are some of the key things. It's not just being on autopilot and flying by the seat of the pants, putting out small fires all the time. That's going to wreak havoc on your nervous system and then get you in a high adrenaline and cortisol state as well. I'd love to dive into the benefits of lymphatic drainage from an Eastern medicine perspective. And for those of you tuning in, I have some exciting news. I actually teach various different facial lymphatic drainage strategies in my tutorials with my next live tutorial series beginning this Wednesday. So secure your spot now over at theschoolofradiance.com. And in seven weeks, I will teach you to become your own skin pro with expert tutorials covering application techniques for skincare, makeup, hair care, and growth, dermal rolling, retinols, peels, and guidance on seasonally specific rejuvenation and lifestyle tweaks to slow cellular aging and maximize your at-home and in-clinic rejuvenation plan. So secure your spot now over at theschoolofradiance.com. 
and they're live. You can also catch the replays at your convenience as well. So walk us through, Chris, the benefits of performing facial and body lymphatic drainage from an Eastern medicine perspective. So the, the beauty of Eastern medicine in the philosophy that, that I, I notice um, is different than the West is traditionally everything is connected. So there, in the, the, the Eastern philosophies, is that we are an organism, we're not parts. And so with that Eastern medicine, it's really important to be able to make sure that the organism, the energy is flowing. The the term that they use is chi, which is basically, um, I like like this description, it's the air that we breathe combined with the foods that we eat and our body just takes the oxygen, it takes the nutrients and we create energy or ATP. So I think that from an Eastern medicine perspective, really making sure that our organism is flowing is so, so important because if if we aren't moving this lymphatic system, then, you know, a a lot of chain reaction of events can happen and our health be suboptimal. So from an Eastern medicine perspective, just keeping all of that flowing and in balance and and in using, like I had mentioned before, making sure that each of your quadrants that you're achieving everyday wellness will really help with the flow of your lymphatic system, the flow of your energy, and then you will definitely be able to see that on the outside. You'll be radiant. Yeah, the movement of lymph in the body is so incredibly key. So for me, for physical activity, I love to do sprints on the treadmill also use a rebounder and just walk and move. But I think it's really important sometimes to actually see a practitioner to do the lymphatic drainage, move that chi on specific energy points with acupuncture. I'm a huge fan, everybody, of doing acupuncture. And the key thing that we will visibly see if our lymphatics are backed up is puffiness to the face and really a tightness to the masseter muscles, the temporal mandibular joints, tightness to the neck and shoulders. And so doing these types of practices for lymphatic drainage, which I teach in my tutorials that I mentioned earlier, is great because when we exercise, we're moving the lymph around our body with our skeletal muscle. However, on the head and neck, we do need to manually manipulate and allow the the energy to flow, the lymph to flow. And I actually like to utilize my fingers. So I know you know this in accordance with Eastern medicine, that actually our first two fingers emit a lot of energy and actually life force. So I actually like to use my hands every time I'm washing my face and putting on my skincare and all of that to support that day in and day out. And you meant, I'm so glad that you also mentioned sort of us as an organism. And I'd love to also dive into the yin and the yang side of things, right? Light, dark, up, down, left, right, good, bad. We operate in a world of duality and staying balanced. So for you, every time I connect with you, uh, you know, when I'm supporting you on on your journey of, of supporting other people as a fellow practitioner, how do you like to balance the yin and the yang, otherwise known as the masculine and feminine, in your work as a practitioner slash entrepreneur, and also in your family life, your your marriage, wellness, and fun? How do you achieve that balance and stay in your feminine that's a great question. And, um, I feel like for myself, um, I'm, I'm a sensitive individual and which is wonderful when you're working with people. And I, you know, I, I, that is a gift that I have. I had to learn how to maneuver being a sensitive person and staying grounded. And that's something I think it's an art form and, and in something I've definitely worked on over the years. And so I would say that I, I achieve balance. Number one is 
self-care to me is when I am showing up my fullest version, when I am taking that time, all the other quadrants, they all feel it. So that's my family life. That's the career. That's the friends, the fun, all of that. So I really definitely, I, a, a quick thing that I do if I don't have a lot of time is the first five minutes and the last five minutes of the day. So just taking five minutes to set an intention And, you know, I, I, I will drink my 16 ounces of water straight away in the morning, get my brain hydrated, get everything hydrated. And then in the evening, if it's a, it's a really rushed day, I do some, some reflection and the last five minutes of the day. So how you start your day and how you end your day for me has been very helpful. And then I would say also what I fuel my body with gives me energy so that I can keep up with the three children, the sports, the entrepreneur, you know, projects that I have going. So really looking at my body and treating my body like a temple. And then I am able to do all of the things that I am meant to do here. And I think that um, my my body really lets me know when I'm out of balance because I, I, I make that a priority for myself. Yeah, I'm really proud of you. And it it shows. So f- you mentioned some key things of, of being a sensitive individual. A lot of listeners are empaths, or, you know, some of you are even intuitive empaths. So we can be really sensitive to our surroundings, people we engage with, things that are happening in the world, environmental toxins, and also foods. And really at the sort of like depths of achieving long lasting deep beauty and something called radiance it comes from purification and purifying our body mind spirit energy and other things as well so i love what you said about how you start your am and pm i would also like to add being in gratitude and looking for the glimmers the glimmers instead of the triggers so the glimmers are the positive things that are happening in your world and in your life and, you know, things that you see, because I find a lot of women really struggle with clarity and purpose. And you're going to get these little signs and nudges that you're on the right track when you see a little bit more of these glimmers and notice when something is triggering you, there might be some things that come up and engagements with others, which can actually be related to their personality styles their attachment styles, and also even their energy if they're pretty like scrambled or scattered. So I have lots of tips for how to negotiate that stuff in the membership because it's super key. What what do you think about when you hear that word glimmer to kind of notice these things? I'm curious about your kind of perception and lens of what glimmers could relate to from an Eastern medicine approach? So when I first was in graduate school, I had to teach myself gratitude and to, to, to be grateful. And I would say from an Eastern medicine perspective, the first thing that they are doing with us is teaching us Tai Chi and moving our body and just an awareness of outside of ourselves. And so I feel like waking up and having, having, if it's five minutes, if it's, if it's 30 seconds, but what are you grateful for? The first thing that you do is say what you're grateful for, it really does have this, it's got this shift in the mind. And so in Eastern medicine, um, it's, you know, if we're, if we're wanting to be flowing and keeping that chi and that energy moving, gratitude is something that will help keep everything flowing. And when you're, when you're stuck on something, there's a rigidity and that, that, that uh, transfers from the mind into the body. So it might transfer into the digestive system and, you know, things slow down and you're going to see that in your skin. And so I think from an Eastern medicine perspective, just really 
again, achieving that balance. And sometimes it just, you have to fake it till you make it with the gratitude, but then it becomes natural. And um, so for myself and my upbringing, I, I wasn't surrounded by gratitude. And it is something that is, has really just served me so well. And we all have challenges and, you know, things come up. So if you can, sh if you can shift, it's all how you pivot and shift when things happen. And like you, you're saying that, that seeing that glimmer, that, that shininess. And I think that it's so important when you're, when your mind is used to going to gratitude, then when you are faced with something that's challenging, we, we're able to pivot a lot faster from that perspective. So beautiful. Can you share with us a couple of points on the face or the body that are going to be conducive to access ourselves when we might feel a little bit stuck or we might be in a negative emotional state or having negative thought patterns? What are some easy things that we can all start doing today to keep that chi flowing? So I would say the very first thing is um, breath work. Are you breathing? You know, are, are you in the U S in the States? We don't, we don't really teach breath work. It's not something that's like in our culture. And so breath work is something that Americans, we breathe shallow, our, our shoulders are up. And so it's just a different perspective. So that's something of learning how to do some breath work. And there's amazing, um, you know, there's a, there's amazing apps out there that are free that you can use to learn how to just breathe deeply. So I, I always say that is a great place to start and it's free. And then um, as far as some points that you can use, if you're in a stressed out space, um, this right here, right? Can you see that right here, this spot right here in between the thumb. So if you just massage this here, massage that, and uh, you do that for about 30 seconds, but then focus on that breath. Um, that is definitely something that will really help to kind of just ground you. There's another um, really good spots right in here. So this is great for your kidneys, which is your adrenal glands. So it really is helping to kind of just reset in this aspect. And so these are just easy things that you can do. And um, so you would, it's so right. This is, a, this is about an inch down from the clavicle. Yeah. Right. And maybe about for those tuning in an inch down from the clavicle and kind of like on either side of your sternum. Yeah. Your and first rib there. There's like a little kind of sore spot. And then yes. on your hand, it's the meaty part between your thumb and your, your uh, first finger. That'll kind of feel like a little yes. bit, a little bit kind of sore too. Mm -hmm. And I love to access those kinds of points too. And if it is a bit sore, that means you kind of need to give it a little yeah. bit of love too, right? Yeah, definitely. And I, I usually, it, it's just a quick uh, test that I do is I will press on this. And if, you know, if I'm working with a client and I'm doing a session on them and I ask them, is it tender? And typically you've got some work to do with your adrenal glands and, you know, we live in a pretty fast paced, stressful world. So, um, I, we don't, uh, you know, I don't, I don't run into a lot of people that don't need to work on the adrenal gland. So I would say using some of these acupuncture points combined with teaching yourself how to breathe well and um, breathe deeply. And I, in, 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 in grad school, that was something I realized I was a shallow breather and I had chronic stiff necks. And so um, I've really worked on the breath work and, uh, but in our culture, you know, I mean, I didn't learn that at all growing up, you know, my parents, you know, that's just not something that we talk about breath work and breathing. So, but it does have a, a big impact, I would say. Absolutely. And getting more oxygen to your brain mm -hmm. when your body's better oxygenated, your skin will actually shine differently. Same thing with going outside and grounding, offloading the excess positive ions that we get throughout the day. And getting more of those negative ions for the earth is again going to balance that positive and negative, which is great in accordance with uh, Eastern medicine and TCM as well. I would love just like final tip here, quick tip 
what is something we can all do in our homes right now to get the energy flowing in our homes in a better way? I would say what comes to mind, what first comes to mind for me is to declutter. So decluttering your space, I think, is something that it takes time, but it doesn't cost anything. And if we're decluttering, and um, that's just, that's going to help, that's going to help the mind. It, your, your surroundings, it's, it create this sacred space for yourself where you can really just decompress and feel calm. So decluttering and then adding in, um, adding in some plants, add some plants, some real plants. If you can, if you have enough lighting, add in some of that earth element into your space. And those two things I think make a big difference. If you clean the clutter and put some beautiful plants, uh, the snake plant is one that will help to purify the air in your home. So those are some just quick, quick and easy um, tips, I would say, to help with your environment. Yeah, keep it pure in your environment. Less stuff, less clutter. Keep that dust down because that's where mold usually likes to hang out as well. Um, and also with your skin, making sure you're cleansing your skin in the AM and PM. Well, Chris, it's been great having you here on the show. I do look forward to having you back on and kind of going a little bit deeper in some of these Eastern medicine modalities for beauty and radiance. And for everybody tuning in, you can follow Chris over at Christine Elizabeth Wellness on Instagram. That's K-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, Elizabeth Wellness on IG. And Chris truly is, in my opinion, an up and coming practitioner who's really blending the best of both worlds for helping us both look and feel our best with Eastern and also the uh, aesthetic side of things as well. So thank you so much, Chris, for joining us all here on the School of Radiance podcast. Uh, learn more in the description of this episode. Be sure to join my upcoming seasonal tutorials. We begin in a couple of days. These are live. Tune in, ask your questions live for expert tutorials to learn how to you know, the icing on the cake, learn how to apply your products. And then for the deeper layers of deep beauty and longer lasting beauty and radiance and the strategies behind that to be as pure as possible, to emanate this beautiful radiant energy, be sure to join the membership as well. So thanks, Chris. It was great to have you here on the show and look forward to having you back. Thank you. It was an honor. And I always love talking to you and learning from you. And uh, yeah, I would love to come back. Absolutely. And if you're also listening and you're a fellow practitioner, be sure to head on over to buildingyourbeautybrand.com because really it's my passion to empower fellow practitioners to make a difference and not just, you know, offer things to to you know, for people to buy and do just to make money. It's, it's, we're here, Chris and I both here to be of service and just truly help others look and feel your best. So if you're a practitioner, you want to reach out, uh, I'm happy to support you and join the community of practitioners really invested in making a difference for those of you who come to see us across the globe. So I'll see you all again very soon right here on the School of Radiance podcast. Have a beautiful high vibe rest of your day and be radiant. Be happy, be beautiful, and be radiant.